this is a system that I'm working on. This color is manganese blue. If you happen to be using cobalt, that's fine. Whatever your blue that you think works well for your flesh, uh, put a triad of three colors on your palette. Uh, I put a gob of yellow and a gob of blue and a gob of red on my palette. And that's what I would like you to do now. The colors I'm using today are um, M grams cadmium red, or you might use Scarlet Lake, but it's a nice orangey red. And I'm using um, manganese blue, or you can use cobalt blue. And I'm using um, I'm using a Windsor Yellow Deep, and you can use Gamboge or any kind of a warm yellowy kind of color. Okay, so I'm just going to make these puddles to show you, but I'll probably use my fancy schmancy palette here because it's small and I can get it in the camera. So here's my red. Now. I'm gonna talk about this red in a second and you're gonna be diluting this red a lot. So, new and improved secret Bill Wise technique. Um, I showed you this little, my little vial here. And, uh, and if you can see, maybe you can see on the white paper, This is cadmium paint and you can kind of see in there, there's water and there's pigment that settles to the bottom because it's cadmium, it's, it's, it's opaque. So this is just, I haven't mixed it up yet, but this is what happens over time is paint settles in this little vial, which is nothing because I'll just stir it up again. I'm not wasting it, Patty. That's a good thing. Where did you get the vial? <laughs> uh, Michaels has them. They, they sell them in these. This brand. Oh. They look, these are storage cups. They are 7.5 mil. But I think this whole thing costs like $3. And you get 12 of them. Oh, okay. So they're, if we were in class together, I might have been giving these to you. Many different brands sell the same kind of thing, but you want to make sure the lid closes. So, Bill, I have a question, and that is that Cad Red, what else is pretty close to that? Um, well, give, me, give me some choices. Um, Azurian? Nope, nope, that's too violet. Okay, how about Naphtha? Uh, that's closer. Thin Red? I, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, so naphtha might work. Okay. Yeah, uh, it depends on the brand and stuff. Is it look pretty nice and ready? I mean, compare the red to alizarin. I want one that's close to the orange. Yeah, it's definitely more tomato. Yeah, okay. Keep going uh, closer to orange than it is to violet. Okay, I tried these uh, little containers. Uh, we went to the written house, and they, these are like little bath salts containers. And I, oh man, this would be great. Well, they they don't seal, <laughs> so if you tip them over, they'll leak. So what I want, try that. You know, don't get too hung up today on this. Uh, I do have a um, whole grains permanent red. Um, that might work. Um, I don't, again, I'm not, you just got to touch it to your paper and see if it's red or if it's more orange. Okay. It's, well, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that's kind of why I'm settling into this. The difference between Scarlet Lake and Cad Red Light. Scarlet Lake is a stainer. Yeah. Uh, cadmium is an opaque. Stark Scarlet Lake, I can't lift as well as I can this cadmium. And they're both essentially the same color, but I use the properties of the cadmium to my advantage, even though they're kind of the same color. If you kind of, again, this is kind of the, now what I, 
I showed you my little, um, I showed you my little scale here. And, and again, if I was next to you, where's my little grayscale? Okay, what I want you to do in this puddle over here, because this is the way you're going to make it. Um, I want this color on your paper, on a scrap piece of paper. This is what I showed you the other day. Um, and this is this little swatch of paper I made. And I want you to know that this layer, level of red needs to be pretty thin. I'm showing a couple different layers of it. It's better to be thin. Well, you gotta be that thin. Okay, so make this puddle of paint here. If you can see what I'm doing here, I'm gonna mix this up and I'm gonna take a scrap of paper, just the corner of something here and I'm gonna put it on the piece of paper. And I can say, holy mackerel, that's way too dark, right? So now I wanna start diluting this puddle, and I do it again. I wanna take some <laughs> of the water out of it. Uh, okay. Okay, so now you can see this, way too dark. Oh, I'm gonna add more water to my whole puddle here now. And I try to, I'm gonna take a little bit of it out. So it's, okay, now I'm getting closer, but it's still too dark, if you can kind of see that. Okay, I'm going for this color here. And you, you need to add a little bit more water to it. Now I want this puddle to be fairly large, so keep adding, I want this to be a big puddle, because you're gonna use a lot of it. It's still too dark. See, I'm trying to go for this value. So I'm gonna add more water to it. And so my brush is a 10, it's fully saturated with this coat of paint. And I want it to go lighter yet. Now I'm getting somewhere. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna come over here. So now I've diluted it and you can see it's just like, just pea water, you know, I mean, there's nothing here. You can see right through the palette, okay? That, I want you to make this level of red. And now I, I can't really look over your shoulder. To, what I'm finding with this little vial is I can mix a whole bunch of it at once. So again, once you figure this out and once you have your little swatch, that you have to make yourself rather than me handing it to you. Once you figure this ratio out, after we do this first wash, you're gonna say, oh, that got a little dark. Now you'll have a spot, a swatch to reference and say, next time when I do this wash, I'm gonna make it lighter because that one got too dark. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna take my little vial here and I'm gonna get some paint in here that I kind of, and, I'm going to get lazy and and I'm going to add water with just my spritzer. I'm going to dilute it this way. And I'm going to mix it up. And I can see it's going to be too dark. Um, yeah. Darker than... That's my target right here. So I'm gonna just add more water to it. So now I got I got a lot in here now. Now I take some of it out because I got too much. Because I can do that with this little thing. I'm gonna go back in here. Still dark. Because you don't need much paint. Okay, I'll go up higher here. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, uh, okay, I'll go over here. Yeah, there we go. 
See how they differ? That versus these. That's what I'm looking for. Okay? Now I've got this big, huge vial, and I put blue tack on the bottom so that I can take it on here and I can stick it. Uh, I'm pushing it down, and now it, it stays in place. I don't tip it over. <laughs> See, it's it's uh, <laughs> kind of stays in place now. Okay? All right. Now um, we're ready. Trig Trig V uh, face is this number nine that we just mixed. Okay, then the next wash, this is called the first wash. This goes on everything that is the lightest. You're going to paint the light. So, so then the next layer, you can see that's number eight here. Here was the nine on his forehead. Here is another layer of nine. Nine plus nine equals eight. So that's just one layer darker. So this is the shadows of his face. And that's about this dark. Can I ask a question? Yes. So before before we start a portrait, should we go to the original picture and make this color swatch so that we know how what we want to mix? Is that what you did then? This color swatch, make this now <laughs> and have it with you forever. It's, I'm using the same swatch just so I can get it reference when I mix this puddle of paint. I want to be able to test it because I know that this number nine is what works best for me. Okay. Um, and I can, I can define it as a number nine because I use a grayscale and I say, because then I can tell you it's a number nine and you can mix up your paint. So you get the same exact number nine if you have a grayscale. So once it's not this grace, this paint swatch is not for this portrait. This paint swatch is for every portrait I do. Okay. So where do we get a grayscale? Well, everywhere. Um, they uh, different companies sell them. This was a freebie. This happened to be, let me, uh, this was a freebie that Daniel Smith gave me. So here's the nine that I've been talking about. And you can kind of see, and again, how to use this is if I look at this white against this, I say, oh, that's white is definitely lighter than that color. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if I go to eight, you can see this color against that color and you can say, well, that's darker. Well, I mean, here's an obvious one. I mean, this is darker than that. If you look, you can say, this is darker than that. That's lighter than it. That's darker than it. This must be, because it's gray and red, but, I can see that that is definitely darker. That is definitely lighter. So the one in the middle must be the right color. So that's kind of how you use these. This happens to be blue. I can see that, you know, that's obviously lighter. Um, this red or this one is obviously darker. So it's kind of in between here and here. So that's kind of how you use those. And it's just, it's, it's something to tell your left brain. It's like, oh, it's that dark. I, I, can def I can definitively explain it to you. It's make it that dark and you can do that. I don't have to say, well, a little lighter, a little darker. I can say, make it a nine. And that's what, we've been doing. So these, and it, it, you don't have to do that. I'm just, I'm 
a left brain kind of guy and I want to be able to explain it to you definitively so you can say, I understand that because this is a gray that he's describing. You don't have to make it up. It's that exact gray. Okay. This, this is something only I do. Um, but I can explain it. Make it this color. Make it this shade right here. Well, how, how dark is that? Well, it's a number nine. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, if I handed you this piece of paper, like I would love to have done it, then you would have said, oh, Oh, I can I can set that right next to my painting and, and just like this. I would have given you this and you would have made a little swatch like that and you'd have said, Oh, I can make that. Oh, too dark, too dark. Bye -bye. Okay. So that's okay. Long okay. ways to get there. It's a number nine. Okay, so so let's instead of going through these pictures, let's just start to do this one at a time. So Bill? Yes. On this swatch swath of colors that we would have then we have the what is it one through nine on the scale well no on that little like the little piece oh. of scrap of paper you said okay well well the crazy thing about the scale is 10 is white of the paper <laughs> okay so so i wish it were the other way because it makes more sense in my head that nine should really be a one but it isn't <laughs> okay. ten is white nine is just under white okay all okay. right so sorry but it's that's the way somebody started it